Give me your name and question, a little bit about yourself, what you're working on. How can I be of help? So I'm Marjorie Ellis. Uh, my husband's here too as well. We're actually doing it together. Uh, his name's AJ. Um, we started your program a little bit over a month ago, um, and we are just trying to get our debt down. Um, I filled out that spreadsheet, and we were just trying to figure out kind of what debt we should tackle first. Um, and then what, I guess, finance tool to use first to get that debt down. So you joined a month ago, and did you enroll in the manifesto on the monthly or lifetime? The manifesto one. Yeah, we did it for the year. For, for the, the year. Month. Awesome, awesome. I sent it to the, I just want to make sure I have the correct email, so Denzel Rodriguez at p.kajabimail.net. Is that the right email? No, send it to the uh, the Denzel at, at builder to contributor dot com. Okay. That that should that should pop up because uh, pretty sure I've sent some emails from that. All right, so while I'm waiting on that, um, kind of give me some background information, a little bit about yourself, what you guys do, what you're working on, some financial goals, a little summary. Okay, sure. So, uh, me and my husband, we both invest in real estate currently. Um, we flip houses, and then on top of that, I uh, currently work at Capital Group, the asset management company. I started there back in April, and then uh, my husband as well, uh, he's a longshoreman, so he does that. And um, kind of the financial goals, we're just trying to get out of debt. We, you know, want to continue to expand you know, our portfolio with real estate. Um, and then we're hoping to get a franchise, you know, kind of once we get this debt tackled and able to get some more cash flow in is kind of our goals right now. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I think there might be a little typo on your spreadsheet. So just go, let's, let's start with the, uh, four major numbers, right? So you wrote income is uh 10,000 a month, Correct. roughly. Okay, on, on the on the other column, it shows uh, 1.5 million. I was like, oh, what am I dealing with today? Oh, that is, um, maybe <laughs> I didn't put it in. It says life insurance, so that's our life insurance Yeah, policy. yeah, yeah, I see what it did, yeah. Okay. It, it, it put it as revenue. So you could, uh, you, you could, scoot, oh, you could oh. scoot, yeah, you could scoot those two over to value instead of revenue. The Got value okay. column, and then that'll, as well as all the other ones. Um, okay. So we're dealing with 10,000 income per month. We have $397,281.39 of debt. And that totals $3,779.82 of debt payments. So I'm gonna try and figure out what your cash flow is. So living. You've got a total living expense. I see you wrote $2,957.21. So $3,779.82. Okay. Plus $3,779.82. So that's $6,737.03. So if I'm bringing in 10K, 10,000 minus, I'll just round up and call it 7,000. Of expenses so you're cash flowing about 3k so that's what it looks like I think the call just dropped so I was just kind of talking while I was waiting so we got 10,000 income income per month mm -hmm. uh, you wrote 3779.82 of, of total debt payments out of all the debts that you have Correct. and then on the living expense you wrote 2957.21 so that came out to six thousand seven thirty seven oh three. Um, so then I kind of just overestimated and said about seven grand a month is what you guys are are spending. Yeah, that sounds pretty much right. So with that, if I'm bringing in ten, spending seven, would you say that your cash flow is about three thousand? Yes, that's correct. Is that money going anywhere? That three thousand. No, the only thing um, is just tithes and our savings account. Let's see, is tithing included 
Let me see. Did I include that? Uh, oh, I thought I did. No. Okay. So yeah, the ties. I did ten percent of our total income, so about a thousand two dollars we give a month. A thousand. Okay. So minus that. So now I'm left with about two thousand. Correct. Of of. That just goes to savings. Right. So that two K just for yeah. right now has been going to savings. Um, do you currently have a debt tool or are you in the process of getting one? Uh, well, we are now, now that we've started your program, looking into getting a personal line of credit. Um, but we, at the moment, don't have a debt tool. Okay. Who do you currently bank with? Uh, Navy Federal Langley. and Langley. And who else? And Langley Federal Credit Union. Langley. I think Langley might be your better fit. Okay. Navy Federal is not doing HELOCs at the moment. Their checking lines of credits are really high on the interest rates, so I don't really care for it. Um, their, their credit cards are okay. Um, mm -hmm. So Langley might be the, the better fit. Uh, what state are you in? Uh, in Virginia. Got it. All right. How long have you been banking with uh, Langley? About a year. We've been with Navy Federal longer. Got it. I'm just looking here. So Langley Federal Credit Union. They offer personal line of credit as low as 7.25%. It's called an extra line of credit. Um, you only pay what back what you borrow. No prepayment fees, no origination, same day funding. Okay. Easy access, okay, we like that. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I'd talk to them because Navy Federal is not too friendly right now. Okay. P plus, 7.25 is a lot lower than the average credit rate on Navy Fed, which I've seen 13, 14, 15, 16, not really loving them so much any longer. Although I've, I have made videos on them, but they're not that great. Okay. Um, with the Penny Mac, is that your primary residence mortgage? Yes, that is. How long have you been paying on that home? Uh, it's been four years. So we purchased it September of 2016. Have you ever refinanced? No. Okay. We actually plan on... Uh, moving hopefully within the next year or two so we don't plan on staying in this residence long term got it so we're not really looking to pay that off correct got it got it, got it. all right so to get things started we can obviously do velocity banking with the credit cards that we do have so you have a usaa visa signature card you owe mm -hmm. you owe twelve thousand two forty three fifty five Monthly payments, 100 bucks. Is that 0% till when? That is till July 2021. Okay. So we're going to so we're gonna continue to pay the monthly minimum payment on that. Okay. Um, the... So, go ahead. Oh, to clarify, that, that 100 I just put, um, it doesn't actually have a minimum. I've just been putting towards it because what happened was I actually had a um, Capital One credit card that had a balance, but when I saw they had the promotion, I got the USAA and I moved it over to the USA once I wasn't um, getting, you know, that interest. So that's that balance. Um, so there's not actually a minimum payment. I've just been paying that. So I could pay more if you suggest or just keep it at the hundred. No, I prefer to pay the lowest required during, okay. during zero percent. So if there's no monthly minimum, I'm, yeah. I'm, well, I'm assuming there has to be. Uh, at least like 50 or something, whatever it is, uh, I wouldn't want to pay any more than what I have to because okay. that's 0%. I want to maximize my cash towards things that are costing me interest. So okay. um, you said you're going to move in the next year. So with that being said, what does that look like? Are you looking to um, purchase something or are you going to rent yeah, so we're our goal is to turn our house that we have now into an Airbnb. 
and then purchase a home for ourselves. Got it. Yep. And so the money that you have in savings, mm -hmm. would that be used for, you know, that, that new down payment on, on the home and any other costs that come with it? Uh, possibly. I'm hoping we'll, uh, you know, by doing this velocity um, banking, hopefully just, um, it possibly could. We haven't actually started actively looking for a house yet, so we don't know kind of the numbers of what we're looking at just yet. Got it. Um, but at eventually probably what's in the savings would eventually go towards the down payment. Okay. Yeah, to answer your question. Understood. Okay, because I'm, I'm just thinking what my time frame is in terms of in terms of paying off debt to create cash flow and then is there going to be a period of time where I put paying off debt on hold to mm -hmm. stack cash so that I I have cash to do what I need to do sometimes that's necessary uh, I see yeah so I think right now till the end of 2020 for sure uh, I want to do velocity banking on my credit card so we have two other ones Visa Signature Cash Rewards with eight thousand five ninety seven fifty seven owed, and the monthly payments one seventy five, interest rates twelve point nine nine. So, that's the most attractive uh, debt to go after. The other one is lower nine point six five at at, at one fifty. Mm -hmm. um, actually, they're very close. So to kind of get things going. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the smaller one instead, kind of following kind of debt snowball rules, you know, kind of smallest to biggest. Um, the student loans that you have, are these on uh, forbearance or deferment right now, or are you actually paying them? So the uh, Navient, the federal loan one, those are deferred. Um, you know, with the whole COVID thing, they deferred those, so I'm not paying on that one currently. The only ones that I'm paying for is the private ones, which is the Sally Mae, those two. Um, are you okay with me sharing your, my screen with your numbers yeah. so that people can yeah. see? All right, I'm going to go ahead and just do that real quick so people can uh, see that. Oh no. Is that a boy or girl? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry about that. I think yeah. my daughter like fell. My husband just got her. Oh, sorry. okay, okay. That's all right. That's all right. Um, let me go back to here. I just want to make sure everybody in the house can clearly see my screen. I want to make sure these things aren't in the way. Can you see it, Marjorie, on my yep. Yep. nice and clear? All yes. right. So remind me on the the Navient Federal Loan. That's the mm -hmm. one that you are paying or not paying? Uh, that's the one I'm not paying currently. Gotcha. And these other two you are? Correct. Yep. Got it. And the Navient, sorry, I forgot to put because it's a that 33000 is a combination of probably about five loans, but the average interest rate on all of them, it's about like 3.5 to 4% for the Navient one. Okay. So this credit mm -hmm. card, Visa Signature Gold Rewards, $7,449.69. Um, mm -hmm. We take our monthly payment, which is the 150 We take our cash flow, which is the two k. Let me ask you, with tithing from your church, do they take credit cards as a payment? Do they accept it or, or no? This is, I've been using my debit card, but I would assume they probably do since I'm able to enter my debit card in there. Okay. Um, but I can double check with that one. I've been putting, I put my debit card, so I would think they would take credit cards. Yeah. I only mention that because um, we could run our ties through that credit card. What's the credit limit on that? Uh, which one? The Go the, Reward? Yeah, the Visa Go Rewards. So that's my husband's. Uh, that one's about 24000 Got it. So there's plenty of space on there. It's not going to take long to kill that. So 
we take all of the bills that can that you put a Y next to that can be paid with a credit card and I think you put the total down here which is perfect so we got 2,000 of cash flow mm -hmm. we've got 2,000 264.17 plus the 1,000 that I tithe mm -hmm. so what I can do for a temporary period of time is run all of my bills that obviously can be paid with a credit card you already listed them all out the 2264.17 the thousand in, in tithing so what does that equal let's see so roughly about five thousand four hundred fourteen dollars and seventeen cents is what I can uh, run through that credit card so five thousand four fourteen seventeen goes in okay. and then three thousand two sixty four seventeen comes out so if you're taking notes you just want to jot those numbers down five thousand four one four seventeen on average is what's going into the card three thousand two hundred sixty four dollars and seventeen is coming out of the credit card obviously not all at once but over time throughout the month to make things pretty simple is when it comes to actually making the payment on the card mm -hmm. you want to um, always make the the payment either before the due date or right on it another simple another way to do it is uh, when you guys receive income mm -hmm. right so we've got what uh, was it four paychecks that come in or is it two uh, my husband gets paid uh, weekly so he gets four and I get two got it so you get two he gets four so that's a total of six times per month mm -hmm. um, is there ever a day where you guys get paid on the same day um, no okay okay so there's six unique days out of the month so you want to take a note you want to jot down what those six days are because they're consistent right he gets weekly you get bi-weekly so those six days out of the month Whenever money comes in, the very, mm -hmm. f very first thing that happens, it, it lands in my checking account. You then want to evaluate, okay, out of this paycheck, how much money can I put in the credit card? Now, okay. when I put money in the credit card, that's considered a payment. So you're obviously paying the credit card in advance always. Okay. Um, some people wait till the due date and, it, and for some people it works that way but in your case it's going to work better and more efficiently to just always pay the card in advance uh, to avoid as much interest as humanly possible right okay so when i get that paycheck you evaluate say okay how much of this money needs to stay in cash before my next paycheck and then how much of it uh, can go into the credit card to pay bills, All right? So, so money goes in and then you swipe the card. Okay. That, that's a very healthy way of managing uh, velocity banking with a credit card. What some people will do to be a little slick mm -hmm. is they'll run up the card for the whole entire month Mm -hmm. and then stack the cash on the side and then pay it in full in one whole day some people do that it can work I think when you're first starting out it's better to just be disciplined enough to just get the money in there um, and usually in a lot of cases you end up um, helping yourself overall because you know that that money had to go in there you don't confuse it it's every time money comes in I separate it 
here's what needs to stay in cash, here's what needs to uh, go into the card. So looking at the numbers overall here, and what I'll, what I'll do for you guys watching is I'll just uh, open a Word doc real quick just to put this in plain English of how exactly this is going to look like because some people get confused with, and in, in your case as I'm explaining is it landing for you is it making sense yeah so I was going to ask um, now do you want me to use one of the existing credit cards that we have to do this correct uh, so the vis uh, the yeah the visa signature go rewards uh -huh. because I do not have a debt tool I'm going to maximize the tools that I do have which are credit cards okay. and and I'm simply going to use the credit card itself right so I'm doing a hybrid of debt snowball I'm not waiting till the end of the month to pay that credit card I'm going a little bit faster by dumping majority of my 10k into the card so 7,449.69 minus 5,414.17 so the balance goes down to 2,035.52 and then expenses come back out 3,264.17 by the end of that by the end of a 30-day period the balance is now going to be somewhere around $5,300 and some change, right? And that's going to take me roughly, say, uh, maybe, maybe three to four months before the credit card hits zero. So there's going to be a point where the credit card hits zero, but you still have to use it to pay your bills. But what's happening is you're no longer paying interest, right? Oh, right you completely remove interest whereas if I was just sending my 2k mm -hmm. to the to the card I would be paying interest on 5,000 oh, okay. whereas yeah 5,000 has been changed whereas if I dump my income plus bills well there's gonna be a couple of days out of the out of the month where I'm only gonna get charged interest on 2,000 on 3,000 on 4,000 so it fluctuates and it lowers my borrowing costs. That monthly payment, the uh, 150, gets removed. You're not going to even have a payment because you're always paying it in advance. So now, almost 100% of that payment becomes principal rather than interest. Right? Okay. Then every time we get paid, we put our paycheck completely into that credit card. And then not the whole paycheck. Oh, just okay. But a but a portion. So to reiterate, you get there's six unique days out of the month, right? That that you get paid. Okay. And that those days, as soon as I receive my paycheck, I say, okay, um, I'm going to evaluate between this paycheck and the following paycheck so let's say that's a seven day period I say okay how much between you and, and husband how much money do we need to keep in our checking account to pay bills that cannot be paid with a credit card because if we use a credit card we get charged cash advance fees and, and all that stuff so we don't want that so when we evaluate it we say okay um, I received a thousand for this paycheck or, or 2,000, right? Um, and out of that 2,000 over the next seven days, uh, we've got $800 of bills that are, that can be used for credit. Food, gas, a phone bill, this, a subscription of that and the other thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna make the payment before you swipe the card. Right, okay. Because now you're gonna get charged less interest before the due date applies that interest which is pretty cool so you're, you're dropping the, the 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 borrowing costs and you're using that same money to pay the same bill you were going to pay anyways plus mm -hmm. plus this thing has go rewards whatever that means so whatever i get in, in cashback rewards 
I'm going to throw it back into the card. And I can do this on a monthly basis. I might accumulate 20 to $30 in cash back rewards. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, over a three month period, that's $90. That's basically what you would pay in interest on that card. Right. <laughs> so you're going to offset your, your cost of borrowing by using the card. Okay. The other layer is that my um, credit score uh, improves, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're seeing that I'm using the card. They see that I'm using my credit, so it's going to obviously improve my credit, which positions me to apply for that, um, whatchamacallit, line of credit. So we got... Oh. Yeah, so I'm just going to type this out real quick. We got balance seven thousand four forty nine sixty nine. Original income in on average is the five thousand four one four seventeen. Then we got expenses out on average could be more, could be less three thousand two sixty four seventeen. Within three to four months, you zero it out. You may have to continue to use it. But it's go but it's it's gonna be money I was gonna spend anyway, so I'm not I'm no longer getting charged interest. So we're so we we remove the interest faster than debt snowball. Doing the same thing. We're just adding a little velocity to it. As soon as that card hits zero during this three to four month period, we wanna talk to Langley. We wanna build that relationship up. Okay. Right, so talk to Lan Langley, build a relationship, watch my videos on, right, uh, all about the line of credit section, and then the recommended credit unions and banks section. I, I talk about the different banks, but I also talk about the process, so there's so it's nice to go through those videos because I'm also giving you the process. I'm not, I'm not just saying this bank, this bank, this bank. I'm saying, hey, be sure to do this, be sure to do that. Look at this, look at that. Ask this question, ask that question. Yeah. So if you, so if you watch those two sections, right? We're actually watching those right now. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. So you're right in, right in tune, right in sync. Uh, when you're talking to Langley, you just wanna, you know, uh, tr try to connect with the same person, the same branch. Each and every each and every time, to build that relationship. Um, depending on your area, if they're open, you could even go in there and book an appointment if you're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking to someone just to show face, they see the interest, and you just you want to take out all the guessing work. You want to take okay. out all the guessing work. Hey, you know, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your P-lock. What's the max credit limit you offer? Mm -hmm. Right. What's the interest rate? What's the credit score you guys look for? Uh, how much how much uh, money do you want to see in my savings? Um, a, a smart thing to do would be to, you know, move all your banking over to them. Mm hmm. OK. Now and it's um, only for a period of time. Yeah. So if if it's possible and we're able to like within the month, get that personal line of credit, do you still want us to start off using the existing credit card for those two credit cards and then, or how do you? It, it um, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt to um, just use the credit card now while I wait, while I wait to position myself, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Right? Um, if you f feel confident that, mm -hmm. y you know, once you get all these questions answered and you're like, okay, I've, I took out all the guessing work. Yeah. This is solid P-lock. Let's go ahead and apply for this thing. If you get, mm -hmm. a, if you get approved, we'll still end up using, uh, those credit cards because when we make our first chunk, it's more than likely going to be at one or two of those cards and, oh. and, and possibly... Uh, like one of the student loans. It, it really just depends because you have we've got the Jeep. It's a lease, so I'm not really paying attention to that. 
Um, yeah, that's next year. Yeah, the uh, the car loans are are just, and the bike, the bike and the van are just too too big for me to go after right now. Okay. So it makes more sense for me to tackle the credit cards anyway. So if I get approved for a P lock come two months from now, a month from now, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna chunk right at the at the card and I'm gonna continue to use the card to run my bills because I'm getting cashback rewards, I'm buying myself thirty days of zero interest. Okay. It it helps improve my P lock that I'm eventually gonna obtain anyways. So that's okay. solid solid stuff uh any any questions uh no i think i'm good oh actually i do have one question mm -hmm. um we actually so my husband gets this uh royalty at the end of every year around december well he gets it in december and it's around ten thousand. how do you think we should use that money to pay so a couple of things either option a i can you know, do what's called like double chunking. Okay. So like if I have a line of credit by the end of the year, which I should, mm -hmm. um, one one could funnel their, you know, all their income into the line of credit. Mm -hmm. Expenses come out, cash flow stays, line of credit goes to zero faster, you find yourself chunking again within like a, a two month period or one month period. The other option is I put that money aside mm -hmm. for a later expense because you talked about moving okay. so you could just say you could just ignore it and just work with my four major numbers my income my expense and cash flow and my current debts okay so that's you know two ways of looking at it there's really no wrong answer i guess it just depends on what makes you uh what helps you sleep at night yeah you know, is it, is it, do you like to have money, you know, away sitting in the account? Some people like to use everything and go all into velocity banking. Some people yeah. like to, okay, well, I'm going to put this money aside. Uh, if I'm a, if I'm commission and salary, I'm going to use my salary to do velocity banking. I'm going to use my commission to continue to save money. Some people do that, you know, okay. and you know, you still get results. Okay. That works. I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Well, God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm sure we'll be connecting soon. Did, and you said yeah. you purchased the annual, right? Okay. So yeah, there'll be more opportunities like this for us to communicate. And should, okay. should you, starting October 1st, should you go through the first 10 or 11 sections, I think I said it was, I'm, I'm uh, giving people an hour of my time. Okay. Because it's basically performance-based coaching at this point. Um, people that are committed, you watch the content, you watch the materials, so and we hop on a call, like I said, straight strategy. Um, and focusing on the numbers rather than me teaching you the concept. L allow my videos to do that and let it kind of sink in. All right. 